Hello, I'm Steve Monkey Mason, and I'm joined once again by the ludicrous Paul Ray today and Carl McSorley. We are back for the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Hi, guys. You okay? All right, everyone. Right, so we're gonna we're on Paramount here. So, what are you guys watching it on? I'm still watching it on DVD. I went back to DVD. Uh, I, I only borrowed the Blu-ray, but I'm in my little setup. I prefer to watch on my laptop, so I'm going back to DVD for this one. Paul Ray. Sky. Excellent. Right, so on three, two, one. There we go. Bum bum. And once again, the Paramount logo dissolves into actually something from the set. And it's the return of the very crappy font I don't like. <laughs> it's not a very good. It's very. It's cold, yeah, Crystal Skull Eye, but obviously they, they had it from the original, they dropped it for the last one because we had red font. And on this one we've got, it's just like an uh, outline, it's like a transparent outline. There might be a bit of a blue tint in there, but it's very bold, um, outline white. It's, it just does, it doesn't look good on DVD and it's very pixelated, so... I think what they're trying to do is put um, radars with this one. Mm. You know what I mean? So they're all kind of all tied together and obviously Terror of Doom is just kind of like the off child, I think. Yeah. But um it, it starts off really slow, but it's a really good intro to young Indiana Jones. Well, I talked about this on the last podcast, River Phoenix, who's about to make appearance in one of his last roles, um plays uh Harrison Ford's son in the Mosquito Coast. Um, so that's one of the connections there. I think it should have been with River Phoenix and Sean Connery. I think River Phoenix has had quite a big name at that point. Um, and I think, to be honest with you, do you think that they were aiming to put River Phoenix into the TV show? No, I think it's just a one-off, really, for this. Like, uh, I think, yeah, I feel like it was a, it was a, like a kind of a... I mean, it worked well enough that I could have seen it go to the TV show. But I certainly don't think that was their intention. Well, it's young Indiana Jones uh, ran for a few years. I mean, River Phoenix died not long after this. Do you know what I mean? I suppose uh, with River the, Phoenix. It's one of the saddest ones, I think, with River Phoenix. Because I know, like, it's almost like, I think he probably would have had the same career as Joaquin Phoenix. I'm not sure if he would have been blockbuster name. But I think he would have been a one that whatever role he picked, it would have been like it would art. You know what I mean? He would do it well. Uh, but yeah, it's just one of those sad Hollywood stories because it could have been so easily avoided. Well, that's it. I mean, it's um, my own private Idaho and stuff like that. He made some great independent movies. Um, yeah. Well, him and uh, him and Keanu Reeves made that film, and I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that they were very, very good friends as well. Yeah, they're running another the film. Had on yeah, they're running a film yeah. called I Love You To Death as well, so they're, they're quite good. Yeah. Um, so I like the score on this. I think the score's, um, it, it keeps it there, but it's still got a different tone in. This is definitely, we've, this is definitely um, Steven Spielberg's first ever trilogy. Yes, sir. Have you seen The Family Guy where Peter Griffin, where Peter Griffin goes, He's going to do the, the song from India Jones and the Last Crusade. He goes, <laughs> it does it for an entire tune like that. It's unbelievable. I'm sure the kid on the and far left there getting pushed away is in Stand By Me. It's funny that it's like India Jones, sorry, Junior, models himself on this guy, isn't it? Mm. It also, um, for me, like, like to play it on the fact that was that Indiana Jones? I can't yeah. yeah, yeah, was it? It was for, sort of red heron, wasn't it? Yeah, for me, River Phoenix has always be explorers. Yeah, River Phoenix. Never seen it. River Phoenix did quite a bit with uh, Sydney Piotr. Uh, they were in a film called uh, Little Nikita. And um, they were in a film called Sneakers as well together. And Sneakers had a big cast with like Dan Aykroyd, Robert Redford's in there. And there's a bit on the stage, like they're all like ex uh, CIA agents and they're all like basically go into banks and stuff and like pretend to rob them to sell them security. And there's a scene where River Phoenix is just going blackface and Sidney Prairie just looks at him like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just like, wow, you wouldn't get away with that now. 
So do you think this works well in the film? Probably like a little uh, prequely young Indiana Jones bit. Yeah, because it introduces the dad, and because uh, you don't get Sean Connery till nearly fifty minutes through the film. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like a reveal as well, though, wasn't it? It's like certainly wasn't something that was set up. I mean, everyone knew he was in it because he was all over the posters. It wasn't like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, when he just turns up at the end randomly. No, no. Yeah. And obviously, um, there was only a like five-year difference between Ford and Connery, wasn't it? Hmm. Well, we talked about it before as well. Obviously, uh, Harrison Ford um, took over from Sean Connery's uh, role in Red October, didn't he? That's right. Took Ryan, yeah. <laughs> uh, the score is a little bit uh, more joyful, like. I guess I think it's just trying to get into a family kind of um, family adventure compared to the Temple of Doom. Getting though as well, when you think about this era, like Back to the Future was done very similar, weren't you? A lot of people were filming out in that Utah desert. It's a very popular filming location, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, well, like um, million ways of dying. Then, then giraffes are so fake. No, they're real, man. Fuck off. <laughs> Those giraffes are real. It's a great. It's a great shot, that though, because now they would just do it on green screen with some camera shake. Yeah. This is, I think this is a bit your way. Uh, you were saying this is the bit where he becomes scared of snakes, isn't it? So when he falls in, I'm sure, and then he hear like a, like a scream or something. I mean, yeah. you would shit yourself if that thing popped up and tried to bite you. This one's scare. This is certain scare. If you see his face here, he's absolutely terrified. And it's also as well, when he gets the whip out in a yeah. second, that's where he gets the the mark on Harrison Ford's chin, isn't it? Yeah. It's funny because obviously this is certainly... That's a scary ass snake, that, like, that pops out of the water. It's fucking weird. Well, he's in the sub with them. I don't mind that, but that one that popped out of the water, that would scare the shit out of me. So this is set in like 1912 or 1911, yeah? And obviously, in the early 90s, everyone had the hairstyle like that, didn't they? The curtains and stuff and long hair at the front. Yeah, River Phoenix and I think Christian Slater had like a similar kind of hairstyle. like. Yeah. They got um, Prince of Thieves. Also. Uh, he definitely looks like Screwball or Meatball or... Curveball, whatever he wants to be from Stand By Me. Like, can anyone check that? He nearly got, he nearly got the bowels. He looks like uh, Kiefer Sutherland's uh, mate. Steve. Eyes. Classic between the leg shot. <laughs> Boom! Boy, falls through. Don't fucking knock that leg. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about this bit. Ah, he's, 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 he's just he's just met the lion. Yeah. Get, get his whip, whip on. He? Get his whippy whip. But again, it's it's like like Star Wars. It's like it's like Solo. It's like how he got his name. How he got the Falcon. But this is but it's done really quick in the space of like five minutes of Indiana Jones. So he's scared of snakes, that's how he gets his nip on his chin, that's how he gets the uniform, that's how he gets the whip. You know what I mean? In the space of three minutes. Yeah. So this one thing changed his entire life. It's all, and none of that's green screen either, do you know what I mean? It's, now it would oh, yeah. be. Den of lions, There's only one lion in there, the lion. I don't understand this magic trick, like, but again, it's just a movie. It's magic, man. What'd you expect? It's a kind of magic. Russell in his box. When's the first time you've seen this film? Um, uh, oh. Anyone ever seen from me, TV? I think yeah. uh, DVD, I think uh, this was kind of like the era of video shop and like, oh, new Indiana Jones is out. Again, I, I, I've talked about this quite a lot. My dad was a massive fan of Highlander and obviously anything Sean Connery I would have to watch, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think it was, I think it was like the first time I seen it. 
VHS for me, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The THX VHS was a little bit later on, I remember all those THXs. Mass, mass did the picture and sound quality. What is it, Doggy? Do you think Sean Connery retired on the right film, do you think? Was it Avengers? No, no, no. Um, it was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Yeah. Was that the one? He must have got a good paycheck like for it. Yeah, it didn't do that well, did it? Is it like another like, set up like a universe that never happened? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I remember seeing, uh, seeing the trailer, and I'll be honest with you, I probably should have watched this. It's definitely up my street, but overall, I just never seem to find it where. It's Steve. It's uh, Stephen Norton, isn't it? The guy who did Blade. He didn't work after that, did he? Is it a bit over production and just totally bombed? I, I love this transition here. Like, he puts a hat on him for a minute. You lost two day, kid. Doesn't mean you have to like it. Uh, the kid who's definitely he's definitely in stand by me, like. But this is actually the most profitable one of all three of them. Uh, well, I keep, I keep seeing all three of them because I'm, I'm still. I think I only saw uh, Kingdom Skulls like once. Oh, it's bad. I already watched it the other day, getting ready for the next podcast. I even invited Big Dave. I says, Big, he says, you've missed, like, we're on doing Indiana Jones, you know. I says, do you want to come back for the fourth one? And I'm just like that. And he's like, nah. <laughs> he's just like, nah. He's just like, like, let us know when you finish that and we'll talk about what the next one is. He's like, nah. Can we just say how mint that transition was where he puts a hat on him and next thing you knew is a 40-year-old DJ Jones. Again? Great, like, like storyboard artists and stuff like that. That you know what I mean. It, it, again, it's like Three visions. Oh yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it would have to be a good script, and there would have to be something there because Steel Spielberg doesn't take paychecks like not anymore anyway. But um, he's not gonna have. He's normally like. I mean, we've talked about this before. This is why there's not a Jaws collection of all four movies because Spielberg doesn't want the fucking his jaws with the other three jaws and he's got enough clout to like warrant that to happen do you know what I mean so like he's he, yeah, but he, nothing with, with Indiana Jones though to me I mean I could be wrong but uh, to me it was such a hype that I think Spielberg was put in the corner maybe it was a case of you either do this with us or we're definitely going to get someone else to do it well no, I, mean, I, think uh, Spielberg, I think for this it was someone that he, he I don't think he would have like the idea of someone else going off and... Well, Spielberg's always been like... He did the second Jurassic Park and like... And then he was just like, like George Johnson who... Uh, probably George Johnson worked on this as well because he was credited in the last movie. And again, he always like picks his uh, predecessor in franchises. Yeah. Was this scene... Uh, again, this scene in the girl's coloured. It's mirrored from the first one, isn't it? The what? From the first so the one. guy walks in on the side of the when they're in the classroom. Oh, the oh, ship's just sinking now. Oh, the ship's just sinking now. Oh, really? Oh, well, I've jumped ahead of you because I seem to be behind. Coronado's hat's just floating by now. Uh, his hat's floating by. Again, though, as well, it's almost like the guy in white is almost like the same kind of body from the first one, isn't it? Yeah, that's... Yeah. So when you, when you watch it, just so you get a heads up, so that obviously you're in the classroom with all the girls. He walks in, pretty much stand in the same place, the class is dismissed, and they have a conversation. Well, that's it. Again, John Ray Davis and the butler's back and from training places, who I'm still, for some reason, believe that he died of HIV. This guy here. Yeah. Let me know when you're in the class. Was he in the classroom? In the classroom. They're all staring at him. Denny Mellions. Denny Mellions just walked in. So I'm, I'm, I've paused it now. I'm on the bit where he's in the hallway and all the kids are like harassing him, basically. Nah, you're still a little bit ahead of us. 
Like, How's the fuck has that happened, Carl? You're watching it on DVD. I have no idea, mate. It's never happened to me. I'm normally the one saying I'm in line with either you or Belongs in museum. Could be actually the uh, spinning of the disc might be a bit uh, shorter frame rate than the one that's on the DVD. Ugh. Yes, my treat. He's in the hallway now. Ah, he's just entered the hallway, and everyone's like, Indiana. Is anyone uh, is any Star Wars references in this or not? Okay, think off the top of my head, Dick. Uh, off the top of my head, it's been too long since I've sat and watched it. I've had to think. <sighs> but I was just about to say before, so this is obviously the highest, uh, the most profitable one of the two, of the three, of the original three. Um, but it is the biggest budget. Uh, so they obviously went out with a bang because to me I always assumed that the title says it all this was always going to be the last one uh, so the budget is actually 48 million and do you want to take a guess at what it made worldwide? oh 325 so Mason you said 300 oh, what was that for? 425 425 very close very close 474 Million, one hundred seventy-one thousand eight hundred and six dollars. So okay. if we eliminate, if we eliminate like uh, the appetite, because that's an arse and a half to figure out how much that costs. Four fifty. Four hundred twenty-six million profit. Wow. Well, yes, there we go. Four point three away. The thing is about when this came out. Obviously, the words "the last crusade" when I thought about it as a kid, it essentially means oh, it's the last one. But no, what it's essentially meaning as there's not going to be no the more Holy crusades Grail. because they find the Holy Grail. Yeah. That's right, what, isn't it? What confuses the, the last crusade? Because obviously the crusades was about Holy War, wasn't it? Well, it's about finding the Holy so, Grail, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crusades was really about religion and stuff, right? so probably like, but yeah, and they just class it as the last crusade. And when they make it, obviously, a trilogy and went, wait, that's the last one. Because I guess one of the main reasons why Spielberg didn't want to do it, and I think Carl touched on it last time, was, one, Jurassic Park was massive. Do you know what I mean? So that's the start of the night he's taken over by its sequel, and also Schindler's List. And, you know, next thing you know is Independence Day, and, as say, Carl had said, or hopefully Carl had said, not Paul Ray, um, that the idea... Ray, actually. Was it Paul Ray? Of course it was. Was it? Yep. <laughs> it was. Uh, Fuck, sorry. I've lost too much credit on this bloody podcast, so I'm, I'm just going to let you Give me a call. I'm, I'm trying. Right. I'm fucking trying to make sure I could. But I was getting, though, no, George Lucas was like, no, 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 no. And then he went off to do Star Wars, so that's why we didn't get another Indiana Jones for a while. Yeah. yeah I mean, it was definitely, you said that the script was written like in the early 90s for... Like alien, like an alien kind of thing, but then when the Pensy came out, it was too similarity. So mm. they just went kind of for a little bit. Yeah. Then they went back to it again. Harrison Ford had, I mean, he started off big with the Fugitive, didn't he? But then the rest of the 90s sort of just did like rom coms and stuff like that, didn't he? Like Sabrina. Yeah, well, I, I think he became uh, kind of like almost like, I don't know, like a silver fox. He was almost like a. Almost like a hard throw of the older man's kind of game. So, play to his I remember Firewall was really good. I like that. That was a really good film. Well, I've never seen like that early. one. Like, uh, I know you're about. Definitely worth a watch. Really good film. But stuff like, what was the one he was in? White Cover Man. It's in one of the. Uh, is it Liam Hemsworth in it? Pandu, Pandu, Paranoia or something? Pandu, Pandu, uh, Paranoia? <laughs> now, is it, you, see, like, you know what I mean? Ender's game wasn't exactly what they wanted and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. The Devil's Zone and stuff like that, like yeah. said last time. 
well, Expendables Cowboys 3. Do you know what I mean? He was a massive, like Bruce Willis out and like Harrison Ford comes in. Yeah. And now we'll get a bit of a backstory about uh, the Holy Grail. One of the things I did notice about the Kingdom Skull when it starts, and I know it's it's meant to be like two years later, how much like advancements and technology was put on the screen with, you know, like digital uh, displays and all that kind of shenanigans. Yeah. Even, even all the digital wasn't around. That the countdown clock wasn't actually around in them days. Huh? For a red right. Red right. There's a, there's a weird echo at my point. <laughs> Me too. Red right. It's like when I talk, I can hear myself talking again. It kind of puts us off talking. Well, as I say, oh, lockdown sorry, lifts in a few weeks' time, and uh, we'll That's be doing. Talking. Finally, be doing Waterworld soon. In the shower. In the shower. Wow, wow we have got a massive echo today, like, haven't we? What you saying? But yeah, um, um, I think this looks more noir as well from um, Temple of Doom. Well, this is, it goes back to the fact that it, it is the sequel to Raiders. I feel like, the, obviously, I mean, the font itself is going back, but if you leave Temple of Doom out, it's... Uh, Sequel, it's, it's a good piece. Yeah, it's a good piece to go together. Because obviously, Raiders, uh, you, you know he's scared of snakes. You know he's got a hat. You know he's called Indiana Jones. Doesn't get touched on in Temple of Doom. And then this one, it explains everything from the first one. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not if you've put them in. But there, at the end there, there's a little bit on the wall. The end scene of the movie's uh, displayed on a bit of a picture on the wall. It's gone now, like it was on the left. I mean, you'd be lucky to get the post these days. I got a letter yes this morning for Brit saying we are uh, we have got your application for um, registered registered vote, uh, voting, obviously with a new address and that, right? Well, four days ago, I got a letter saying com congratulations, we can confirm your registered voting is all sorted. So I got the letters the letters the wrong way around. I was like, for fuck's sake, man. I delivered some of yours door today. Actually, I've seen you today. You did, and I'm much appreciated. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meet ups because I'm not invited anymore. You're cool. You live the other side of the country, all. almost. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I get that one there. The, floor, the picture of the guy walking on. For there. Yeah, that's a nice little picture of uh, photoshopped of. Uh, River Phoenix and uh, Sean Connery, like there. Yeah, I thought that. E God, Jesus, I mean that guy. Uh, and uh, Sean Connery's past, River Phoenix's past, his butler's past. There's oh not many God. left. There's not many left in this one. I actually forgot Sean Connery died. I'm not sure. One. I forgot about it. Over a year ago. Yeah. Jesus Christ! I'm not sure. I thought he's still around. No, no. Oh. Do we need to pause this or do you need to recover? No, it's, it's alright. I can recover from bad news within a day or so. Another overlay. Okay, the old, classic old map yeah. scrolling. I was going to say back there. Yeah, good stuff. I've That's been in Montage. One, Portugal. Controversial I've... question though. But do you think Sean Connery was a great actor or do you think he just got the right roles? I think he was 
I think Sean Connery was a very like um, he was an international star because of James Bond. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? He's almost essentially a fucking superhero because he's James Bond. Because if you look at Timothy Dalton, do you know what I mean? They sort of have that massive yeah. pop, then they go quiet for a couple of years. And I think Sean Connery had a few quiet years. But like he had some weird stuff like Medicine Man and Zodiac. And like, again, when you look at him casting the Highlander and he's meant to be the Spaniard, Egyptian Spaniard or whatever. And it's just yeah. fucking weirdness. But I think his voice, but I think what resurrected him was The Rock. I think he was fucking class on The Rock. Uh, oh, I think, I, think I think it's his Nicholas Cage, uh, one of the top five. But the whole idea that... Like, was the time. Was the, the Joe Brookheimer time, wasn't it? Like, I, uh, Conner, done, yeah, yeah. Bad boys, off. bad boys. I mean, like, um, Sean Connery meant to be technically James Bond. That, that fan theory, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's a whole yeah, double yeah. set. It's, so I think he had his... I think he's he's had some impact in every decade he was around. Do you know what I mean? But I, I think... I think if you looked into his IMDb, you'd probably be surprised how many films he was in. Yeah, yeah, I could say it would probably be more shite than it was good. But I think because of the ones that he picked were always iconic. Yeah. They like say you'll never not be just fond if you know what I mean. I'm going to quit hearing his back, guy, because I keep uh, hearing myself back like a fucking duck. Huh? <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Um, um, sorry, guys. Um, as the podcast goes, there, um, it's, just, it's the first time I've ever had a massive echo. So yeah, bring it back. So again, once lockdown's lifted, we will probably be doing a lot more of these in person with microphones and stuff, rather than hello guys. Hi. Hi, hi, Carl. Oh, you that? I was just filling in the void. We're a podcast. Well, I'm no, talking no, to the camera. Yeah, did you let, I'm you not... let me and Paul on our lines, so we were having a conversation. Well, I said to you guys, I was going to ring you back to get rid of the duck effect. I'm not going to lie, like, it's a bit ducky now, like, it's a bit ducky now. Well, it's cut. No, I'm laughing because I don't want the duck effect. I want to know the theory. The duck came himself back. No, man, it's the reverb. Is Paul there? Has Paul just gone? I'm here, but you've knocked me headphones off now. How the fuck did I knock your headphones off? I'm miles away from you. <laughs> Fucking boomerang slap. <laughs> Oh, uh, you're already disconnected. Are you still yeah. But yeah, um, I as a kid though, going back to this, right? I love kind of mystery kind of things like discoveries. And as a kid, I was like, oh yes, like the X and all that. I love a good treasure hunt story, but it's sort of I don't know. Like when I rewatched this the other day, it, the the like the payoff wasn't there. There's the X. You have that beautiful marble floor and he's just going to bat the fuck out of it with a fucking bit of post in a second. Yep. So again though, something different in this Let's movie. See. What's the matter? Have you broke your headphones, have you? Hello? No, you sound worse than before now, mate. What have I done wrong? I think we've established that on Mason's end. Right, I'll ring his back again as the guy stamps oh, his books. No. Bye. Right, so we're having some technical issues today. Um, as I say, it won't be too long until we can do all do this in person. Um, Carl just lives down the road. Um, I dropped some stuff off for him. So. Hello. Hello. And um, Paul Ray is always welcome to stay over here. So that'll be like how we do the live podcast going forward. Uh, for now, we are having technical difficulties. Even Paul is even disconnected. Uh, oh, Paul's declined the buddy. Let's see. Declined. Yeah, see, I have to say we're having a few issues today. Um, it does happen. It has happened before. Again, these are just podcasts. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. We've had a hell of a lot more successes than we've had failures. In fact, I don't know. Oh. I've never been. I've never not been able to produce a podcast. So doing well, but. Oh, getting there. But again, I'm going back to this discovery here. I don't think it's as good as I remember it. And Hi, Paul. All right. That's better. Jesus 
Christ. Sorry about that. Um, right, now that we're into the kids, there's one thing that I was going to talk about before we cut off. The love interest. Um, you can see her coming a mile away that something's not right. There's no... There's no chemistry like flying with the last girl. Nah, uh, well, look at this. She's like, I don't know. Is the word like kind of? I don't know how you'd use it. It'll be like kind of like she's a bit too smart, a bit too well said. See, the first one, she was his counterpart. Like she was just as tough as he was. Oh, she was. The second I. one, damsel in distress. Uh, so like you know, he need, she needed him to rescue her all the time. This one, she's kind of like too clever, as if like oh, I don't know if I can trust her. Oh, here's the arc bit. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice little Easter egg reference. That trust me, I know. Then the music, then the music goes back to. Can we just say the fact that we missed the guy stamping the thing that was like the best joke in the film? Ah, it is. I ah, it's dead. It, bang. There's a lot of humour in this. Just, also, where he runs, runs up the stairs, goes, X marks a spot. But then, at the beginning of a film, he goes, X never marks a spot. Well, so he contradicts yeah. himself. That's what I missed. Oh, God, he just looks like he Do smacks it. his head off the wall there. Head off the wall? I was about to say the same thing. So, Carl, would you be alive so far? Uh, I'm around, yeah. Yeah, I'm around, totally. So I mean, don't get me wrong, I would have had a hard time with the lion. But I think I would like to think I would have done the same thing as Indy. You would have been a lot younger though. Yeah, younger, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, that was quite uh, agile when I was younger. I've been to a kind of bit of a rough and tumbles, and I've never broke a bone in my life. So. Ah, we were talking about that last time, remember? Yeah. yeah. The bit where Paul Ray was on the, where he was on the electrical the tape, the electrical wire, and then he fell off the tree. And winded himself trying to be Indiana Jones, yeah. Indiana Ray, yeah. Let's just say, don't ever make a ropey out of electrical wire. It was only again, last week. Again, though, this one so far to me as well. I mean, this is set bound here. Do you know what I mean? Um, and there we get Rats the... Uh, again, though, this the, the Mummy, I think the Mummy remake with Brendan Fraser... Again, they borrowed a lot of this storyline, like the um, the people who are just there to protect, do you know what I mean? Because that's all they are. Yeah. So a little fact known, every single one of these rats was specially bred for the film. They couldn't use oh, yeah. rats because of how much uh, of a risk it would be oh, yeah. based on how much uh, diseases they carry. It'd be the same so kind of rats that they use in um, I'm a Celebrity, isn't it? One who have no, yeah. like... Like um, um, rabies and stuff like that. What what happens? You know what what's the process there? Uh, once the scene's done, you've got like in fact I've, I've actually got a number. Hold on, let me note. Uh, two thousand rats. So two thousand rats. What do you do with two thousand? They'll rats? get drowned. They'll get killed. And uh, I mean, to be honest with you. What it'll be, it, it'll be an animal wrangler. So in Hollywood, these big ones have got every fucking animal you need. Semi-trained, like Bart the fucking bear, or Dexter the monkey, whatever you want to call them, mate. <laughs> and, um, I mean, to me, honestly, Bart the bear's a hilarious one, because when Bart the bear actually died, the next, the, the called Bart, the next Bart the bear, Bart the bear, because there's only one bear. Because, like, no one's gonna, like, nah, there's one bear for one job. So whoever's got the bear gets the job. No one's, no one's running around breeding a fucking bear. You know what I mean? So there's Bart the Bear and Bart the Bear. So like animal wranglers, like, at the end of the day, if you breed that many rats, right, they'll not get hurt during the film, but fuck me, they're going to put them in a fucking barrel. You know what I mean? And if, if they'll, no. they'll either do that or feed them to dogs. No, they'll just take them home and look after them for the next film. 2,000 yeah, fucking rats? Like the snakes? Ah, I think they've got union. You've got protection. Paul Ray, my next file I've got a transfer is actually called Paul Ray. It's from October. Uh, I tell you the date, October 2015. Um, yeah, October the 10th. Oh uh, yes, I remember that day very well. I don't know. I'll, I'll, it, it? I'll have a look in a minute. It's, really just, it's, it's just transferring <laughs> to see what it is. No, it's alright, mate. I don't want to. I don't want to know. I don't want to see. 
I'm not saying I'll just tell you what we're doing. Listen now. This fire effect is really good, like. Can't beat real fire. This bit I would die. I can't see underwater. I mean, I know. I, I just, I can't do it. I can't see underwater in the sea or even the swim baths. Yeah, I can't put my head in the water. The swim baths are full of chlorine. Mm. I don't think anyone should be able to see underwater in the swim pool. I can swim, but I can't get my head in the water. If you know what I mean. Yeah. It freaks us out. Really? Ah, I don't know. Oh, Paul. I tell you what that video file is. It's the night you sent us your YouTube video and said don't share it, and I, I, I don't. I think I accidentally unlocked it. I've got a message here. Back the future pop private video to the moon. That's awesome. And there's a video of me uh, watching yeah. you, and I accidentally like liked it. And when I liked it, it I actually sent it, yeah. that out. And you, you remember shouting at us? <laughs> yeah, I remember it. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's that's well funny, that. Did you turn off the laptop? No. no. No, I'm just in the back seat now enjoying me retirement. Retirement, huh? Yeah. Concentrating on me body and me mind more than anything else. And Jesus. Some great stunt work here, I think. I mean, um, do you think these are all like? Do you think there's a? Do you think there's a driver underneath the boat? Do you think they're specially picked boats? No, I think those are real boats. I think. Well, she's not trying that. I would have assumed that was a real boat. It's a real boat, that man. Apart from when it gets chopped up, pumps. Are you crazy? Go between them. Are you crazy? Uh, it's a noise also, isn't it? <laughs> like noise of a steel and the metal. I tell you what, fair play that Apparently. stunt guy. Harrison Ford's going to punch you out of a boat. And it's not just the punch and all that. It's the fact you're going to go backwards and get a fucking wake in the like a wake of a wave in your face. <laughs> <laughs> or instant explosion as well. Boom. There's, a, there's enough steel there to, to make Casper steel books. Yeah, I spoke to Casper yesterday. I was like, how many steel books you get for your birthday? He was like, none. I was like, ha <laughs> No, it was his birthday yesterday. Oh, I didn't know that. The music's you really good here. You were threatened by a man in a fez, though. I know. I mean, I mean, look at... Uh, I mean, Tommy Cooper, look at him. Just like that. Well, I mean, the man died on stage and people didn't believe him. It was a bit serious. No. They just thought it was Paul Black, didn't they? I got given a suitcase full of DVD, DVDs the other day and there was the best of Tommy Cooper in there, like. Oh, I, loved, I love stuff like that. Wasn't it Sunday the Empire or something else? Or was that Sid James? It didn't Sid James die on the stage also? In the Carry On films? I don't know. This is really good stunt work, yeah, like. It's really it's good fun, set fun. design, yeah. I mean, it would have just been done on a water tank, but like. Fan of propeller, bloody hell, it's a big fan that, isn't it? That'll keep you cool. So I think this is a fake boat, Mason, just in case. Oh, yeah, but again, though, no, like, the idea, I mean, the end of the day, the way it's going down, Harrison Ford could easily get a fucking bit of splinter in his eyes, unless there's a massive perspex thing we can't see there. No. I mean, come on, man, he's swing, swinging from veins and everything, wasn't he? Uh, man's made of nails, man. Unless it's a uh, door and I'm a left bump, you know, that shit. <laughs> So anyway, I want to talk about something as well. Um, just before we start recording, obviously, Suicide Squad 2 trailer's been announced. And they've went and done what they did with the Predator, where it's the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Mental. Well, it's kind of like, a, it's a weird one, because it's like, it's not a remake, but it kind of is. Because they've obviously kept with a lot of the uh, original cast from the first one, but it is a complete redo. You know, so the 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 first one didn't exist in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's kind of like obviously they've had to work around it because I think Will Smith wasn't available, so then they turned around and said, "Well, we'll just not use Deadshot. We'll just use someone else." But they've even made they've made a spin-off though, haven't they? John Cena. They've made a spin-off series while they've been in lockdown as well, haven't they? 
Yeah, well, that's the thing that annoys me, you see, because, I mean, it's probably an easy thing to say. I think a lot of people are like to hear on John Cena. I don't, but I mentioned in the group earlier on, I don't buy him as an actor. You know, at the end of the day, Harrison Ford can be any Dan Jones, he can be um, Han Solo, he can be, you know, character feature of you name it. He embodies the character. Mm-hmm. Now, not every actor has to be backward embodying character, but they have to at least be able to sell it to me. That That's what they're trying to do. John Cena has always been that person who was John Cena pretending to act. And so therefore, it annoys me in the sense that if you're going to take all of those actors, all those different characters from The Suicide Squad and make a spin-off, why would you go with John Cena? It, like, it seems to be more of a cash-out. Well, it's like, yeah, as well, like, Croc's not in it and stuff, isn't yeah. it? Because Salone's the, Salone's the cro- uh, shark, isn't he? Sylvester Salone's the shark, isn't he? Salone? Salone's the shark. Yeah, he's the, he's the land shark, he's just a face. Is he the face? I don't know. I'm not really invested much in the DC news at the moment. But it's James Gunn, isn't it? It's James Gunn, though, because uh, someone posted the poster on the group page, and I'll be honest with you, that poster is... 95% awesome, except for the shark. You know, they've gone with this really, like, kind of uh, chalky, uh, bright colour on all the characters, except for the shark. <laughs> so, you totally made him stand out for no reason. Anyway, Indiana Jones, because, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what's going on? Another trashed hotel. Yeah. I'd, uh, have you ever told me yeah, the story yeah, about yeah. that? I mean, she's you fucking... Don't think it's I mean, she's trashed a hotel, but, yeah... Uh, I remember one of the first times me and Brittany got together and uh, we booked a hotel because obviously she lived miles away and I woke up and the hotel looked like that, you know. Literally, it was like a scene from the fucking hangover. Honest to God, I went out, I was drinking with Sluggy, right? Uh, I was drinking with like uh, loads of people in uh, Newcastle and I woke up and I had no fucking clue where I was. I opened the window, just seen train tracks, graffiti on the walls, I was like, where the fuck am I? And uh, when I got out, I ended up on the seafront. I was like, why couldn't I have a fucking view of the seafront? <laughs> Can you remember years ago when, uh, obviously, she had a vinyl player playing in the bathroom, yeah? Can you remember when, oh, that's old, that's olden days, that. And now they're, like, everywhere. Hmm. I'm telling you what, I was fucking cutting out the other week. I was uh, looked at my final play and I don't have a fucking headphone jack. I went, how's that fucking happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know the high jack on the, on the f- You know when I did the high fidelity video? When I did the high fidelity video, I was like, yeah, I'll plug it in. I was like, doesn't plug in. So, Venice, never been there early. The thing about Venice and stuff like this is that uh, this is one of the yeah. many places that have really benefited through, uh, through lockdown. Uh, the, the reckon the water's like so much clearer. Obviously, the wildlife come back, you know, mm. stuff like that. It's like one of those things. Cause obviously, in Austria. There will be, I don't think in our lifetime, but there will be a point where Venice will sink, you know what I mean? It's like the water's right at the end of the day. Mm. I was watching it. Um, Holland. There was. A, uh, I did a podcast without you guys for Mine Hunter, and um, they were on about like years ago when someone had the bright idea to build a dam, and that's how we got Amsterdam and stuff like that, like a whole country, because someone built the dam. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, his Scottish accent's terrible, isn't it, Terrence Ford's? <laughs> About time you're gonna leave us in the rain. It's terrible. Fucking no, it's French. Not bad. I did watch it's a video uh, on YouTube a while ago. It was um, some of like top ten actors' worst accent. And uh, I don't know what the film's called now, but there's a one where Tom Cruise is doing Irish, and it's by far one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Oh, far, uh, far, far, far and away, Nicole Kidman. Oh, I will be, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You are... 
it goes it goes like if you, if you are a German artist or something like that, I'm Mickey Mouse and hits him. <laughs> oh no, not Nazis. The back. Oh, not these guys again. Guess who's back? I think if you're going to have anyone, right, I mean, to be honest with you, right, obviously Spielberg obviously had a massive interest in the German side of it, because obviously Schindler's List, but you know what I mean? Um, and he's Jewish. Well, that's it. It's like one of those things where it's kind of, if you're going to put someone on the screen and for tell it, uh, don't just do it for the crack, make sure you know what you're doing. It's like Tarantino sometimes gets a bit of grief for um, his language dialogue, and especially when he uses the N-word, um, but again, like a lot of people say, he writes it how it would be, especially like the older stuff when it was back in the day. And he's, you know what I mean? It's kind of like that's how it was. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to make something very serious and not family based, do you know what I mean? But I wouldn't look at the dialogue. I think he looked at it best when he turned around and said, you know, if you're insulted by that, then you're missing the point because it would be more insulting to do a film based around the time frame of the black uh, kind of slavery mm. and not be referred to what actually happened and to make it nice. Yeah. Sure, can yeah. Finally comes in, boosh. I think you will look back, it looks when he hits him with a shadow, it looks like it's a fucking umbrella. Junior? Sean Connery didn't do enough comedy. I think he's got great comical timing, like. I said Cadbury was five years older than Harrison Ford. They look completely different ages. I suppose that happens when they get a white beard. Yeah, white beard. Well, again, though, you've got. Like, the only 15. I know, but you've got to think about it's the Scottish bloodline and the American bloodline, do you know what I mean? It's heritage. Mason's only 21, he looks 45. I'm 37. Uh, yeah, you are. 37 years old. I know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 32. What are you for? The big 4-0. <laughs> oh, Christ, do I feel it? I know, 10 years old, yeah. I'll only be 50, imagine it. Oh, oh. Each day, you take each day as it comes, each day as it comes. Well, I Mind you, this, this third lockdown is not for age, there's even more now, like... Oh, I've got wings, like, I've got some pretty great wings under my hair. I've shaved all my hair off in January. I have to apologise, boys, it's early yet, but I'm going to have to go to the toilet. Oh, you've had more hairstyles in these lockdowns than I've had in my lifetime. You had that makeover where you had all your um, your bleached hair, then you had your tash. Yeah, no, I think I think it changes around, you know. No, I went I went to, I went to cut my hair, but I went totally wrong. I went totally wrong, so I ended up just shaving it off because obviously it was open to fix it. But you know what, my hair's like Mason. By next week, it'll be flowing. Ah, uh, your hair grows far too quick, like. Hi, Sean Connery. I mean, he had a he had a weird start of the nineties, like didn't he? But like, The Rock again. I mean, what was the other ones he was in? Like Entrapment. That wasn't too bad. What else was he in? The Avengers. Are you all right there, Paul? Well, Paul seems to be doing some of it. <laughs> Carl's gone for a, obviously a poop. Um, so yeah, anyway, Sean Connery. A big long dialogue scene here. Um, but again, it introduces Sean Connery and it shows you, it sets up a lot of stuff, especially how this now introduces a comedy element between the two characters and they both have a good shouting match. And again, that's what you kind of want when you see a movie and you've got your big fans. Oh. It's a perfect gun and all the, you see all the, all the bits of flesh coming off all the soldiers. Yeah. 
don't call me Junior. But as a sailor, it's also like, you know, like when you first get actors to join together, it's what you go to see the movie with, you know. And then here's the joke that she's obviously slept with both of them. This guy's really good German, like, isn't he? Ah, he's a great villain. He's a Nazi. He's got a blonde hair and the blue eyes. No, he won't. I tell you who plays the creepiest uh, German I've ever seen is uh, Donald Sutherland. Have you ever seen Beerfest? No. It's like... Um, is it a comedy? Well, you know Club Dread who did like Super Troopers and... Um, oh, yeah. uh, Broken Lizard, they did Super Troopers and uh, Slam and Salmon and that. Beerfest is one of their movies where they're all in it. And it's sort of a bit like dodgeball, but drinking beer in Germany. And Donald Sutherland plays the German grandfather. <laughs> it's just fucking creepy as shit. I love it, like, um, I think it's a certain way. He goes, how do you know she was German? She talks in her sleep. And then they're like, hang on. Does uh, that mean him, him and her? Eh? <laughs> I mean, you would, wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Sean Connery, definitely. No, I, I, I mean, don't. what? I mean, um... <laughs> it should be high maintenance, like, but, you know. Ah, she talks in her sleep. It's just smiling and look. Imagine, imagine if the sequels were like they both had herpes and how to deal with it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Indiana Jones and the trip to the clinic, it'd be like... <laughs> Didn't listen. I told you not to trust anyone. Ooh. This was what, 1989, wasn't it? I, um, I, yeah, it was. It was a late 80s film, yeah, yeah. So, like, there wasn't an Indiana Jones film in the 90s, was there? So. busy it is oh, and all that, uh, and uh, John Ray Davis makes his return in a second, he just seems to find him on the street. I've oh, seen that, they have all got off the train. It's a setup before it goes, he knows every language, he knows dozens of people, he doesn't know where he is. He's fucking lost. So, I'm just carrying around Carl fixes his computer. So, 1989 we have Batman, Cyborg, Field of Dreams, Licence to Kill, The Burbs, Roadhouse, Bill and Ted, Excel Adventure, K9, Turn and Hooch, Look Who's Talking, Penny Asher and the Kids, Weekend of Bernie's, Dead Calm, Uncle Buck, Lethal Weapon 2, Born on 4th of July, Dead Poet Society, Black Rain, Tango and Clash. That was Cino the last Hero, movie, wasn't it? Kid Part 3, Clash of Tizzy War, Pet Cemetery, Little Munsters, Driving Miss Daisy, Croft Billion. Star Trek V, The Punisher, Steel Magnolias, The Wizard, When Harry Met Sally, but, oh yeah, Battle Future 2, Ghostbusters 2, Dream a Little Dream, never heard of that before. Hey. So, so yeah, a canny bit. I would love for us to do a podcast of Dream a Little Dream, but that maybe have to be one um, night you come over. We'll watch it with a takeaway and then do the podcast because I, I, I really wanted to talk to somebody about that movie. Because even when Brit watched it, she was like, what the fuck's going on? I, was like, I have no idea. Can I just say, I love the new Nazi logo. It's like a Nazi symbol with a little palm tree hanging out top. Totally reeks 
designed it for the desert. Just as well, the so, throwback there when they, uh, they get they lose that guy is obviously a throwback to the original when they're going to hide the guy, don't they? Uh huh. They're going to hide and hide the truck, don't they, for Indiana Jones? Yeah. You think when people do stuff like that and there's enough times passed between the original and that, they go, "Oh yeah, like that's an homage, it's a throwback." But if you were the first time viewer and went, "I've just watched all three of these back to back," hang on. The third one's just like the first one. They did that, and it's like, do you know what I mean? Some, sometimes I have this. I have this on time of Ghostbusters one and two. It's exactly the same setup. Something happens, then business montage. Something happens, final confrontation, finishes. The two films are exactly identical. Mm. Just laziness. Have you got uh, John Mishdabe just started fighting the town square? No, she's kissing him. No, she's just kissing Junior. So are you before or that part or after that part? It's after. After? Yeah, after, right, okay. Well, cause, cause I don't know what's happened, because obviously we threw one out, I checked all my power outlets, everything's fine, and then powered it, didn't want to work, powered it again, didn't want to work, powered a third time, it's now worked. Mm. Palm tree, which was sticker, so I get what you're on about, Paul. It's like, uh, technology, it's just fucking mental, man. We'll have to the bit where you just punched um, Ninja Jones's. Right, I've got a tiny bit of so I'm going to scan it a little bit. So going back to the, I mean, don't get us wrong, this has a massive climax action scene. There's not much action yeah. happened in this movie, in the middle, has there? Chase. Like the boat chase. Swinging from them. Aye. And the next one is really the tank. The tanks, it's really good Desert seeing chase. that, yeah. Are you past the revolving floor? No, no, he's no. just he just struck the light and now on my end. Right, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Oh no, until I we've got the um the airplane scene. Oh yeah, yeah. With a blimp. Um I tell you what, right? Just I mean, the fire, now. the fire spreads so quick in there. The amount of times I went out and light my incinerator bin, I'm out there for fucking ages, going for fuck's sake, man, just light. <laughs> that, that was a big blow, that like. That's how they get you, man. Cause I've done fire marshal training, and I've seen real life footage of a house going on fire, and it didn't take long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, something got advertised on um, on Instagram the other day, and they're basically uh, styrofoam uh, 3D panels that you kind of just no nails under the wall. So basically, it's it's like a proper cave effect, like 3D brickwork, and it's like it looked really nice actually. But then when I started looking at the reviews, it was like I don't know what the rules and regulations over here for. But like a lot of the Americans were like. Oh yeah, like these are like not like these are proper against regulations, and you lose like your insurance and your house and everything if you've got this sort of stuff. Because apparently, like they're so flammable, it's ridiculous. Mm. Oh, that's true. Like, I mean, what I saw, I thought, oh my gosh, I saw that. <laughs> Revolving doors now. Quite funny, like in it. Right. It's a nice sketch. I, I like this. I like. Especially like because they don't get recognised straight away, they go around twice at least. Sean Connery, like, Sean Connery throughout the late 80s though had been taking more of like supporting roles on, again going back to Highlander. Um, I mean he spent a lot of time in the late 80s, obviously Hunt for Red October, that was his last big one of the 80s wasn't it? Solo. But like stuff like... I'm solo? No, I'm saying like, um, like as uh, Sean yeah. Connery headline, but like we see stuff like Untouchables, he was the support character and that and stuff like that, wasn't he? He was... Yeah. Rather than trying to hold on to the limelight. He wasn't deserving of the role, but it almost felt like it was a treat to have him in a film. Mm. I think they were kind of like, you know, using him as a, oh, well, definitely, it's going to get recognised because it's got his name in it, but he also backed it up with his acting as well. Like, so. Oh, he's he great in here. Yeah, he's great in comedy timing on this. 
Those are just I kill doors, man. man. Um, it's not locked them in fire. You, on house, you, you need to start like um, finding new ways of like building secret rooms and stuff like that because that's what every house needs. I've already got a fucking secret room across next door. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll, I'll wait. well, you know, you know, in the double switch video, when I go next door, and obviously, like, I didn't like they're not on camera yet, but um, yeah. like, I went in the house, and I was just like, like, even above their living rooms, like, my room, I was like, Jesus Christ, like, it's just so fucking weird. Their, their root, their house is tiny compared to mine, and we're like, part of the same building. They're not even hidden uh, in the box yet. But you'll notice, just, right? And I, I feel like it's a bit of a, a bit silly on how, um, Indiana Jones's part because like, he literally could have waited a second more and they would have been on the board and that would have been fine. But yep, literally jump on, he drives away, then jump back off again. You could just yeah. wait, like I said, till the further down the down the river, then do it. I think I've established that I'm a better Indiana Jones than Indiana Jones. Yeah, more. I always say we get a good now, bit of a chase in there. I have crashed all of three times when I've been on a motorcycle, but I reckon with a sidecar I could make it. Yeah, it's a bit easier. I think I'd crash every week on my bike. And that's a push bike. Yeah, it's a push bike. <laughs> every time you've got a neck or pole, it's like dead quick and you've got a push bike. <laughs> Again, though, like, it's kind of like, it's well done. I mean, it's like, fair enough, they can hide. Uh, but now, I mean, now it would have been done with green screen, do you know what I mean? And Sean Connery, Sean Connery was up for, like, getting in the cart. Imagine we had a low budget now, nah, I'd just get my stunt double to do it. Well, that's Like, yeah, but then again, you're not thinking the insurance is not as high as No, not then, no. It's like a joust, isn't it, from the old medieval days? Fucking, and then the, the the magic bike that keeps on going. Explode? Why does it explode for? Because that's what happens with action movies, which things will randomly explode. Yes, I just checked my watch. Yes. Speaking of which, I need to get my pocket watch ready for work. Yes, of course you do, Carl. Oh. You're going the wrong way. Oh, yeah. It's this scene, I've seen this scene twice actually because I uh, took a break watching it a, uh, a couple of nights ago and came back to this scene. Never understood that. I've never had the, the purpose of stopping and watching a film to have a break from it and then revisit later on. I mean, I would literally be watching a film at 2 o'clock in the morning with an hour to go and I'll be determined, well, I guess I'm not going to bed till 3 o'clock. I would never consider like just stopping a film and then picking it up another day. No, no, it's normally when I'm in Eden, that's all. Even like the Snyder Cut, I watch all four hours of that. I see the yeah, Steelbooks I mean, has one been one announced for that. I know, that I know the Steelbooks... I know the Steelbooks just been yeah, announced yeah. for that, but everyone needs to buy Uncle Peckerhead for twelve ninety nine on Blu-ray when it comes out in May. That movie is fucking brilliant. Mason, I don't know what you did there, but for some reason, the last couple of words that you used there, you went a bit fucking all over the place. Yeah. Sorry. Movie? Uncle Peckerhead. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that earlier, and I've never heard of it. It's fuck. Yeah, honestly, guys, right? 
we watched it on Sky because it was one of the Sky movie premieres. It's that good. It's getting a Blu-ray release, but it's about a band that goes on tour, and um, the, the the band's mint, and it, it, the film's been made so well for low budget. The guy who uh, agrees to drive them as a roadie ends up being a demon that has to eat people, but they just accept it because they need to get this tour going. It's fucking funny as fuck, like. But it's all. Can all I just say it? Sound like a mason film. It is? Definitely. Can I just say that slap that he gives him is proper, like, heartbreaking, isn't it? Oh, you, you didn't hold back, like, did you? And listen, to be honest, like, you, you gotta say, the thing about the Edge Jones film, it shows you a bit of history that with the Burburn and books for religion. Oh, this is a massive set, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you talk about the budget, I mean, how much that would have cost. That's not CGI, it's all in camera. There's fucking hundreds of extras there in costume. Yeah. Nazi memorabilia. Do you know what I mean? You can't just go to the shop and pick that up. Do you know what I mean? Someone's got to make that. Yeah. 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 It just shows you a bit of history, though, doesn't it? I mean, absolutely. I think it's important to kind of... If you're going to go with a timeline, you've got to be honourable to that actual timeline. That's why I said a bit about what we said about Tarantino and stuff like that. You can't just sugarcoat just because you don't want to offend somebody. We can't deny where we came from, otherwise we'll end up being back there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Need to learn the lessons from the wrong, not erase them. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you can't talk about that. Well, it happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Very childlike, you know, really childlike minded. Do you know how. You know, you know, these days, you know, like how rough Harrison. I mean, Jones is there with Elsa, yeah? Like, we grabs it by the neck. You couldn't do it these days, could you? Well, Paul, I know you've been out the game for a while, but to be honest with you, from what I hear, actually quite a popular thing these days. You know what I mean? No, I'm just saying you couldn't see me. I know. I know at least several people who have said, oh, I, yeah, definitely. So, like that sort of thing. So I'm just putting it out there, just saying, given my minimal experience, because I've been out the game longer than you have, uh, but apparently it's a very popular thing. Alright, okay. <laughs> yeah, just educating, just educating. Oh, hit that! How do you know? He's... <laughs> yeah, he had many decoys. Oh, I, love, I love how he's signing it, it's just fantastic. Dead funny. And the fact that he just assumed that he wanted him to sign it as well. It's like you give him no indication that he wants that to sign. But he's like, of course you want to sign by me. That is your pen so I can sign the book. That's racist, that but again, going back to the first movie and all like how the the race was on for the arc and all that, and then for Hitler to be in this one, it's kind of like, yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know, do you think, like, obviously Hitler was the main villain, but do you think that was kind of the main thing that he was But it's, I mean, it's years later, it's advancements in technology. I mean, what was the biggest dominated power at the time would have been the Nazis anyway, wouldn't it? Well, no, that's okay. I agree. You have to go with the Nazis if you're going to be in that timeline. Because that's the biggest power they had. Yeah, but I mean, you have to go with the Nazis if you're going to be in that timeline. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, Another um, film at this time, Rocketeer, when they get on the blimp. Sean Connery definitely reading that newspaper upside down. <laughs> Nine. 
Nine. Nine. I did do evidence. Uh, get around it. I thought she was going to tell them to put the tag No tickets. What? No, it's definitely, well, definitely the right way up, like. Yeah. You're not just checking your laptop the wrong way around, Carl. <laughs> I restart your laptop upside down. That's what it is. I'm not fucking the way around. It's upside down. Foxy, no, man, right there. There's no way you, either one of you has seen the phone to prove that it was definitely the right way up. I've got the glasses right. on. No, that's it. Oh, well, I mean, I have got 2020 vision like that, so yeah. That was funny as fuck today, I see, it's too cold, I can't hear, I see, oh shit, I forgot he's doing <laughs> yeah. You know what it is though, it's like there's a handful of moments when people have done that was before, like, and it's kind of like, it doesn't bother us in the flight, but the last at work, she must have been about maybe 60 yards away from her, and she would like speaking as if she was stood right next to her, and like, I let her just finish, and like, by the time she finished, I, I looked at her, I like, did you think I got any of that? Should I? Yeah, I'm so sorry, I forgot. I didn't realise. Well, I was outside your house for a while. I was fucking freezing. I was getting out and going back to the car. Did you know what's the pool bags? I got a message saying that you were at the fence. So I went, oh, I went to fucking shoot them. And the thing is, because I didn't want to walk in here. You've gone quiet again. Headless headphones. Headless headphones. It's just the internet, Carl. There's nothing you can do. It's just the internet, man. I mean, there's not much we can do. This is changing times. We just have to do the best we can. Another big long. Better place for you and for me. Um, can someone do it? And I'll do this actually because I've got the box set. I'm just wondering. All right. Which is the longest? You figure out your boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so hang on, let's have a look. This is two hours and four minutes. Oh, the fucking slimline case. I don't even have a fucking time zone. I must have the two hours and six minutes. Uh, someone else have a look. We have to have a look. What do you want to know? Just which is the longest one? Because this is quite long, isn't it? Oh, right, okay, yeah. I can tell you that. I've, I've got... You know, uh, so this one, two hours six. Uh, you have a two hundred two, yeah, two hours. Uh, yeah, I've got rated on the screen. That is one hour What about Kingdom Skull? Five. Oh shit, I forget that one. Honestly, I do. I just literally. Uh... Best one. What's your guys' thoughts on the Rocket Takers? That had a big um, blimp scene at the end of it. Like, oh, what was it, a year later? But that's actually George Johnson as well, who was uh, Steven Spielberg's right hand man, wasn't it? I've only seen Rocket Takers once, like, I can't remember much about it. Oh, it's great. It's Air Force One, there's a one. Oh, it's just good for them. So American Patriot, like, so cheesy. So what do you guys think about these effects, yeah, of the planes? I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to give them credit it's because... It, yeah, it is noticeable, but, like, you know what? Like, there's a very black outline around them. But, like, they've, you know... They were in the buggies before, you know what I mean? Sean Connery was to L into it, but you're not going to get them up on a plane on their own, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I 
I, I think what it is, it's it's hard to do the special effects during the day. Oh yeah, you know by I mean? far. In the, in the dark, it's really it's really like. I mean, it, it's a matte outline, and you can see. I love that the way he just shoots the tail. And blames them. <laughs> it's the detail because you know you wouldn't normally think of doing that. It's that sort of detail you'd expect to find. I'm sorry, Sean. We got us. I think that's the charm of these, like you said, the 80s films is that you can check the special effects were practical and it did what it could. Fuck me, there's some goats there in that scene, like, wasn't that Jesus? Yeah, there's special bread for this one, I think. Ah! <laughs> they would have definitely fucking let them after. Ah, I can see a couple of their kebabs on the go, like. They were based on um, John Wayne, weren't they? Fuck off! A little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throwback. Transformers podcast that get me the piss ripped out of us all the way for saying what I'd like. You did say after his prime was modelled after John Wayne. He fucking was. <laughs> the fucking director talks <laughs> about it. He says fucking John Wayne is the fucking. But how do you there? How do you there? Octa people, what do you call them? There was a video game for this, wasn't there? On the um. Sega Mega Drive in it, yeah, it was so hard. I never got that, actually, I'm surprised. It's one of those things you ever think about, like, when you were younger, then why didn't I buy that? Because I had the Mega well, Drive, I had loads of games for it, and I just, I don't know why this one never popped up on the radar. I mean, the end of the day, fucking that pilot's just fit as fuck to do that, like, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Smart enough to fly a plane and all that, but then just to crash it into a tunnel. George Lucas had a big thing though with the, this kind of era though, isn't he? Because he, he produced that film Red Tails, doesn't he? Yeah, oh, yeah that's that a really good, really nice. good film. Like on that, I really enjoyed that because everyone was going out oh, the effects and all that, and everyone got confused. George Lucas didn't direct it, but I think it was more that they were putting all the effort behind the effects and telling the story. Um, did George not, did not direct Red Tails, did he not? I don't think so, Matt. I'm sure he, I'm sure it's one of his films that he directed. I don't think he did. But this is a class scene as well. We would have got a fucking bird wrangler for this. Yeah, George Lucas director and Anthony Hemingway, the both those two people directed it. Oh, right. I thought it's one of his very last movies that he directed. Eagles. I don't think that plane looked very good. Yeah, how many seagulls were harmed in that film? I like this little quote here. I shouldn't remember my time march. But the army speed of rocks and the trees are birds in the sky. Love it. That's uh, a little bit of criticism, course. like, but do you not think that, I mean, I know they're trying to get across that he's like kind of experienced. But the only thing I might just lose a couple of points for me here is that Sean Connery never sells that he's panicking. Mm. And I think it's just taking it away a little bit. It's just like, you can play it cool, but like, when you've got like, death-defying a moment like that, and Sean Connery like laughing it off for the best part of the time, I don't think that would have been the best way to handle that situation. I think you should have played off at least a little bit like he's concerned. Can we just say, well done, Alexis Sale, for disguising his comedic role? This is Alexis Sale. Oh, it, it fucking, do you know yeah. what? It, it, uh, uh, from the young ones, he does a great job of this, like. I, I'm like, I, I recognise him, like, isn't he a scouse? Because <laughs> every time he. Yeah, Tony Baloney and all that, he's Reggie Baloney, he plays a different character every time he turns up in the young ones. Boloski, uh, aye. Yeah. Would we have choice or just come out of nowhere, Alexis Hale? Well, again, though, they've probably cast from um, Europe, so they'll probably have to, like, the, the unions and all that, bring them in. Just a weird role, not me. Tanks, escorts, vehicles, everything. <laughs> I'm sure Alexis Hale was Scouse. 
the only other film I think I've seen Alexis Seal in is what was it called Swing it was heavily trailered on VHS when uh, Hugo Summit buddy gets out of prison and he can play the saxophone and wants to set up a jazz band and I think Sting's in the film or something Ice Scouts Oh, the focus dropped a little. Isn't this the one where the focus drops out really badly at the end? I've heard of that. I've not seen this in a long time, so I don't know if that. Because the focus is... in my eyes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you talking about when he's in the car with John Rhys Davies? Yeah. Aye. Yeah, yeah. So my eyes are going there. Oh, I got a lot of now. I haven't got a hanging on to... Uh, where I fell apart, uh, I did want to finish the tagline, just in case everyone wants to know. Uh, it wasn't the oh shit, what happened? Uh, <laughs> that was for, that's actually the Kingdom of Christmas School. <clears throat> I want to uh, It is, have the adventure of your life, keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, it's a little bit of a play on word. Uh, and I think my personal favourite is the man with the hat is back. And this time he brings his dad. Hmm. It kind of tells you what you need to know about the film. You know what I mean? Binocular effect. Jones is one. Binocular effect is on the screen right now. Yeah, that, that works. So I think in here because he's actually using it. Junior, get down and can see us. The miles away. I like, I like it goes there. Uh, do you want a drink of water? I would rather spit in your face. Again, Sean Connery jumping over that wall before that explodes, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Fuck, what's with a creepy. creepy reverb? I oh, know, it's really bad tonight, like. And I don't like the sound of my own voice, never mind hearing it again in the. Echo. Will you give it a company for you, Paul? Oh, I don't like company. Company brings misery. Again, this is a bit like the first one, though, isn't it? When they go down the long carol and he's got the bazooka and stuff on the island. Yeah. No, it's completely different. He's got a massive tank. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> there is a lot of um, got a massive tank. There's camels. You've got grenades getting thrown. The sound effect when he chucks them grenades is fucking class. Like the sound mixing, it's like. It burns. <laughs> it's like you know what I mean. It's like put that. It burns. That is a strong game. No camels. I remember the game because it had a horse chasing sequence. Yeah, it was hard as anything, wasn't it? Ah, uh, there was a few games really hard back in the day, like like that. Like, um, you know, I was talking to you guys last time about the Predator, uh, Predator 2 ending game. Yeah. And I said it was hard as fuck, and like, I've actually, the new video I've done, uh, cover to cover for Predator, um, in that video, I revisited that end section because I mentioned it. And it's just impossible. I'm playing it with no cheats on or anything, and it's just impossible to finish. Like, <laughs> oh Henry, old boy, I'm here to get you out. That was a good stun horse before, wasn't it? When it fell down. And then uh, Harris Fudge on top of it. Ah, it's a really good stunt, that, yeah. Oh, you're good old slapping in the face with a glove. What does Book tell you? Like, does it tell us? I love this. <laughs> it tells me that you stupid morons like you. If you try reading books, it's not burning them. I just remember a little quote from this film. And obviously I've got a subtitles on. Da, 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 da. 
Not Beth Jones, that's Jones. Here we go. I mean, this is a good action oh. scene coming up. It's the special effect where the tank goes up the edge of a cliff and it's and it's still and the model's still holding on to the top of the tank. Oh right, yeah. The guy. I remember he's hanging off though and all that, and it's like, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty mental when he picks up the exact rock and it fits perfect, but like, would that rock like not be just fired out? It just like, I mean, that to me is un not very believable. Like, it kind of makes it like a, like a Looney Tunes cartoon, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 What's up? There is one bit that always confuses us, and I'll tell you in a second when it comes up to it. But yeah, there's, there's not much action to like the like the last half, is there really? Yeah. It definitely goes back to the adventure style of storytelling. I mean, Connery and um, Harrison Ford were great, and there's there's like. The scene where the first took meet, then there's the scene when they're in the chair, then there's the scene in the blimp, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, I mean, there's some great stunts here. I mean, when they fire the fucking car off the tank. And then the music kicks in. The poor guy's just trying to get out of a bloody car. I know. Schnell. That's his aim, Schnell. I can only say a few phrases in German, and one of them is, um, das ist ein Kino, where is the cinema? That's it. <laughs> you don't listen to much Ramstein then, do you? <laughs> just, just at work, Mason, in the morning, like 8 o'clock in the morning when I come in sometimes. I just, I, I, that's Ramstein. all to do who I'm in with, like, because I'm in myself, I'll just put a score on, but if there's somebody who's got a face like shit, I'll be like, right, that's it. Metal morning. Yeah. Here he goes, perfect rock. I remember the Super Nintendo game, Super NJ Jones trilogy was awesome. I remember the uh, Xbox game, I really enjoyed that, but I think it was just an Xbox exclusive, I think. Yeah. Can you remember the PC ones and they get click and click, click and click, click and point one? No. Take like, uh, like, like Atlantis and stuff like that, you would just have to like do investigations and click certain artifacts and make things. I think that's what that double switch game is, I thought. Say what, Carl? If you sound like a game you'd find on your school computer. Yeah, it's one of those games. I'm learning. Yeah, it's one of those boring ones. I don't really like those clicking, 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 collect. Bloody hell, man. Those clicking point ones. That's all I've heard of the only one I ever played, and I don't even think I played it that much, to be honest with you, was, I think it was on the PlayStation. It was, um it was the X Files. Oh yeah, when yeah, yeah. School, like, you literally have to be a detective. You know, you have to literally search like every cranny in the room. There's the gun. You couldn't, you couldn't do any if you didn't find any. That is the the gun yeah. joke in it. The one gun joke in the movie where he shoots them all in a row. That's, that's oh, horrible. Did he stop missing the X Files? Yeah. I love X Files. I've heard X Files for like a few podcasts, Tim Storm off. I was there, like, we've, we've managed to get through the entire Indiana Jones series. I don't think anyone's been in the X Files. <laughs> but not next. The next one would be Alien, so. Yeah. So I have to do. I have to find out, because I'm obsessed that way. This film got a lot of errors, apparently, if you go on IMDb. It's got so much wrong with it, apparently. Uh, but. Unfortunately, there's no evidence that his newspaper was upside down. But the only <laughs> thing that does come of it is apparently the newspaper was already very crumpled up from the cane pushing the newspaper down, obviously after taking previous takes. Yeah. I mean, I remember getting the metro on the bus and trying to fold that back up after reading it. <laughs> Give up. I'll not have them on the buses anymore. <laughs> there you go. Nah. It's COVID. 
We're nearly done for the movie. Ah, it is quite like your mind. See that there? See, look, there's bankers tangled there, yeah? It's right next to the rock. And there's a massive um, rock coming up. Mm hmm. And then suddenly he ends up on top of it when, uh, obviously, when um, his dad knocks a guy out or shoots a guy. Yeah. So did Bomber not come back for this one? No. no. Bomber? So he's hanging. Oh, strange. Bomber. Oh, right. So here, see that he's hanging by his bag? Yeah. yeah. Shoots guy in the head. And then moves. Three, two, one. Somehow he manages to untangle <laughs> his bag. Hi. See? Is this... Eh? There's a I scene taken out there for Pearson, like, definitely. You would have to take, take this bag off to put to one side to go over top of the gun. There's a bit of blood there, like. How does one get off this thing, I love that? When he just elbows him in the face. Douche. <laughs> I've seen this film thousands of times, like. I'm... I'm so far ahead of you, but like, I'm not, I don't bother now, it's just like, I'm trying to keep the thing. Hey, Paul. I'm at the bit where they're all looking over at, they're all looking over a cliff in the bloody, the morning, Indiana Jones, and it's just right next to them. Hey, Paul, guess what the next file is I'm transferring? What is it? Our mate, Oliver Harbour. <laughs> That's from January 2006, I'm up to January now. Sean Connery came quite close that. to that edge there, like. Alright. I lost him, Marcus. Five minutes would have been enough to tell him. <laughs> Anyone seen Tremors um, 7? This is how Tremors 7 ends, you know. No, like, uh, Spoilers. well, that's it, the spoiler, aye, but it doesn't play out this way, it's the opposite way around, it's like, is he, is he, and then it just ends, and you're like, oh, well, he must have died, <laughs> just like, fucking hell. <laughs> to be honest, like, I can't give up the tremors after, like, the fifth one, sixth one, I was going to say, I think that's probably, it's, it's your one or two, I think I, I would happily revisit them for the podcast, I know we've obviously done the first one. Uh, but I've had all six on Blu-ray, uh, and I think I've only ever seen the first two. Mm. No, the f- I mean, I really enjoy the first three. I mean, the TV show they made in between three and four is mint, but they just go, they go a bit weird. I get like um, like shows a little bit of more. 
caution to him because we're cool. Well, come on, let's go. That's it. Do you think this film could be a bit shorter? Um, it felt like the whole bit at the cliff side could have been the bit where they all just get on horses and just run it, like, run away. I mean, it would have been a complete opportunity. You still need some of these scenes, but it felt like that's the way it was filmed. That is to say, right, everyone's just going to jump on a horse and just mm. ride away now. So the fact that we've still got, what, a good, I don't know, 20 minutes ago? Yeah. I always like the the ending. Um, reminds me of Hellboy. Hellboy's got a very similar ending, I think, when they go discovering and that. But um, again, back to the mystery and the, again the adventure, the treasure hunting adventure. Can I just yeah. say, colleagues, like before, before you go, I in RE, my um, teacher had a picture of this t like, temple on the wall. I'm not going. Oh yeah, I'm not that, yeah. Said. That's what I just said. I didn't realise it was actually a real, a real building. I thought it was just so done for the film. Made for, yeah. yeah, made for the film. I like how you were. You did your thing there going, wow, were you really interested in that for? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, what do you want to know about it? So they really you to an Indiana Jones. Does it really have a whole degree in it? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a post of the, of the uh, temple on the wall. I was like, oh, hang on, that's, it's in Jordan, isn't it? Yeah, uh, swimming in Jordan. It said, come visit Jordan. I had a picture of that and it said Jordan. I was like, hang on, it's a tub of doom. Uh, I mean, uh, a last crusade. I wonder how many films. Have many films. Uh, of this, because obviously one of the parts of work is that if you work into the uh, Freemason Lodge, obviously the, the whole gimmick is, well, not gimmick, but the whole thing is that nobody really knows when Stone Nation started. It's like kind of inconclusive of like an actual start date. So like one of the biggest theories is like the Knights of Templar were the ones who like kind of in that era where it all started. So like when you sort of talking about stonework and that you sort of sit there and think, I could totally squeeze a couple of Indiana Jones facts in here and <laughs> one. I remember a stone cutters from the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or my first mark. Oh, this year, you know these um these stores or the blades uh, they don't look very good they look like cgi a little bit don't they they are they are they've got to be they've got to be um they've got to be cgi i don't know like proper, like, when he gets when he stops the um when he stops the contraption later on i love the sound effect of the heads rolling proper like a hollow head like bowing down the thing Always. Uh, so I just want to say, really, because we, we have a certain kind of generational point of view on this, but it's interesting that I was just looking on IMDb, uh, and the popularity of this film is actually going down. Uh, it's within, I think it's 571 in, a, in the space of whatever they're all ranked in, so they're all like, not even in the top, say, 300, which I was quite surprised at. I wonder if this is like, you know, with the younger generation, of people not buying oh, yeah, it'll be, You think it's too much for them? It'd be too, it'd be too slow for kids these days. They've got a lot of religion stuff now in it, so you've got Nazi stuff in it, so yeah, I think these days, it just show its age, I think. Obviously, I, don't know, I, I agree, I, I don't disagree, but I, I think in my head it's like, I have a hard time, like, I find these films have always been quite timeless. Oh, yes, yeah, but I still will, but... Now and, and get it, and understand it just as much as I did when I was a kid, probably enjoy it a bit more when I was a kid, but at the same time, I don't think they've aged, like, horribly well, is it? Not for us, <laughs> but for... For kids these days who grew up with like streaming and digital, not mean and action films and yeah. slow mo, not mean we grew up with this stuff. So to us, it's timeless. Mm. But if you show this to a kid now, they'll be bored. Yeah. It 
don't crack me up that uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League is 24 minutes in slow motion. Fucking hell, you know. Ridiculous. Make them stone lions, they're quite cool. The only thing I learned from this film is how to spell Jehovah. With an I. With an I. That's all I learned from this film. <laughs> that all you learned from it. <laughs> yep. Ah, oh, it wasn't. It was Jeremiah who was giving us loads of shit, wasn't it, Carl? In them American videos, not Jehovah. <laughs> <laughs> Jer- Jeremiah. It's never replied to us ever, you know. Well, no, because that's what they are. The, 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 the Keyboard warrior. Your characters just randomly comment on certain videos just to get a reaction. Yeah, I need to stop doing that in your videos, Mason. I'm so sorry. I need All to right, change thanks, the profile back. Cheers. <laughs> Jemima. Well, it's nice to know that that bloke wasn't uh, Jemima 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 I don't know, it bothered us. He can't get the wrong end of the stick. He comes to CGI. It was, a good com- it was a good conversation. It was like, I was busy doing stuff in the morning, and every two minutes it was your guys talking about this, this comments and stuff, and it was so funny. Mate, like, they look like they're definitely computer animated and blades, like. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to tell, because at the same time, they were doing a lot of CGI, but it was really with um, Willow and Morphin, and um, I think just of Sherlock Holmes. I mean, it might, the movie to, be, one. to be honest with you, it might be just the material they are, and how they're lit, do you know yeah. what I mean? It might be how the lights banged off them, because they're, they're in the it, background it does, there. Yeah, it does look fake, but I think it's just the way it was shot, I think, like, yeah, you're right. They stand out, though. Now, here's the thing about this, right? when he's trying to get across here. In theory, could you not have a stick and poke it? But when you see him fall through, there's nothing holding the rest up. If one goes, all should go. <laughs> and I'll uh, fuck that. Jehovah gives up an eye. Jay? Shouldn't he not know that? He also looks like he's fell halfway into the fucking board. Yeah, it's a Latin man. But why couldn't you see that? Oh, because I might be ahead of that. Walking across a bridge now. It's a weird effect, the bridge, but yeah, it's kind of... I mean, it's quite good. Could you not see the bridge? Is it because it's camouflaged? Well, that's it. It's the belief, isn't it? I say it's a belief, but I think it's just the way it was, it was made, wasn't it? I think it's really good effect, though. I think. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's a. This is the part of the film where we really talk to you. It's kind of like um, one of those magic paintings, isn't it? Oh, the magic eye books. Yeah, those, My yeah, like um, but it's like you know, like. But people draw like something on the pavement, but it looks like they're looking down. Oh yeah, like but only at a certain point of view, I. From a certain point of view. So, basically, I think it's it's always there. It's just really well camouflaged. I think it's just been painted really well, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. I think. Well, it's probably a blue screen thing when he stands on it. Yeah. It definitely is when he uh, when he gets across, when he throws the sand across. It's definitely blue screen when you see that. But then a twist to the side, you see it as rocks, don't you? So... I thought you were talking about real life. <laughs> oh, real life is definitely CGI. That's, that's definitely a map painting. Roll in the Matrix. Yeah, that's definitely Matt Payton. But when it turns to the side there, it's... Not. It's clever. It's really clever for the time. I think you use that as a hammer trick. I think it's a stylish way of doing it. And it's nice when the that's camera the goes back, and it, it, you know what I mean? When the camera goes back, it blends back in. I, I, I think it's really cool. Yeah. 
and then push. I'm surprised right now that the night they didn't cast somebody with a bit more of a cameo. Like Christopher Lee. Ah, Christopher Lee would have been good. Or Kevin Costner. <laughs> Well, again, he's been waiting all that time, and he swings the sword, and he falls backwards, and it's like, again, comedy, he should have more had that, like, it's too much But it's too a much time for comedy, though. I think mean, that's where you got to get the time, that's where you got to get the time. I, would, I wouldn't expect comedy in that part. No, it, that's again. Like that part, right? I mean, he's looking for the, the, the last, he's looking for, like, the Holy Grail for a start. Yeah, it should I mean, be funny. So, well, I, th I think it's just like it went a bit stupid now. You got like a hundred year old monk, crusade guy, knight, god in the yeah. cup. It's just beyond well, belief now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you say cast Mr. T? What's he having no, for his tea? What's he, what he having for his tea? No, I thought you said I cast mean, Mr. T. Well Look me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not against that idea. I'd take Mr. T. <laughs> so the thing is, I believe it all until this bit. I was like, hang on, you've got a hundred year old guy. It's actually, 700 years or somebody's been there. Why? It's even worse. It's only one of them. There's, there were two brothers, and obviously, the one died and one. Well, look what happened when uh, Rimmer got stuck on Rimmer World after 600 years. There was fucking an army of Rimmers. Make head. Ian Mac, uh, what's he called, man? Gandalf. He would have been good. Ian McKellen. Aye. Uh, now he would be, but in 1989 he probably wouldn't look as old. Well, he played Death in uh, Last Action Hero a couple of years later. The same kind of makeup and that. I uh, imagine that I'll choose. I mean, you're instantly going to die there because you haven't made your own choice. She just looked at the first cup and went, that one. Uh, I'm but when it turns, first... it is very much like uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark when obviously all the faces start on that one. It's very similar. Have you guys ever seen Life Force? It's fucking amazing movie, amazing on Blu-ray, but some of the uh, the human bodies in that are mint, and it's very similar to what appears here. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on record. I may die here. This is the bit. I'm not <laughs> sure if I would have. I'm not sure I would have picked that cup. You know why Paul's. I mean, it is the oldest, crustiest cup there is, but still. You know why Paul's died in this scene, don't you? It's too bloody no. interested in the poster in RE rather than they've got other guys fucking saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the we RE teacher was probably telling us everything I need to know in case this happened to us. I'm too busy looking at the poster. Yeah, that's it. Tell us about the RE teacher with that pre Indiana Jones. <laughs> it is really good effect, like, isn't it? Uh, Bet his breath smelled low. And then he just explodes to the wall. Like, yep. Get off her. Uh, smash. I would pick up a cup that had J for Jesus on it. And we need a poo next to it. Would you have. I would have had a uh, short round back in this, you know. Oh, you and short round. <laughs> no, but he would have aged enough. He would have aged enough. Do you know what I mean? He still no, would have been relevant. No, because like I said, that they're trying to keep it like the like James Bond films on it. No, but like even as a like even as a cameo, if he was assistant in the um, at um, the university. So hold on, hold on. University. How old are they? Tell me the two. What like eight or nine? Probably yeah. But they didn't call Sarah. How many years? Is it? How many years? Is it between. 
Well, I'm just saying, you know, give the kid a break. <laughs> you, 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 you just, 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 Brass just tilted, isn't it? Not me. Yeah. yeah. More likely, Brass given the age. Like I said, I would have picked one when he when he was two. I'd holding the J for Jesus. And the lady's gone crazy. She's gonna kill herself. So obviously, this heals. Um. Harrison Ford, uh, this heals um, Richard on. Jones' dad, yeah? I've got a few. Does it give him eternal... Sorry. Does it give him eternal life? Oh. Well, that's it. Because in the fourth one, Indiana Jones says your granddad will be looking down and laughing. He should be immortal. But it's only immortal if the stay between the lines, you know, when the the the, the, the uh, says he kind of go past the, the symbol well, on yeah, the Yeah, that's why, that's why the knight's still alive. Oh, right. See, because he stayed That's with right. the temple, so yeah. if he stayed in the temple, he would have lived forever, yeah. See. So if them two stayed in the temple, they would be alright forever, but when they walk out, they'll go back to just immor- not immortal, they'll just go back to normal. Yeah, yeah. That answers me questions, yeah, you're right. Drop your guns, please. So between this and Cliffhanger, is there any other film where the hero actually drops somebody? Um, like of significance. Um, Ace Ventura when nature calls. <laughs> I had thought of that, but I didn't think I'd include that because you know. I but she can't survive. She's she's double crossed everyone. It's yeah, and she hasn't drunk from the cup either. And she's crossing a seal. I mean, to be honest with you, it's a pointless death. She should have died in the um. She should have died in the room. But she she's the reason they lose the cup, basically. She, she just knocked it. She went to get it and she just made it worse. She just knocked it even more. Now, I do say this, but she is really good. The bit when she tries and gets it, but then she falls and he goes down. And he does the same thing that she tried to do. But then... He has to let it all go, doesn't he? She's got to let it go. And she just falls into the smoke. Ah. Yeah, which is clearly only like maybe a foot tall. <laughs> and this is why women only get half wages. <laughs> wow! Fuck me! <laughs> That's Carl McSorley. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are the individuals and do not represent Lonely Tree Entertainment, myself or Paul Ray. <laughs> Carl can take that with his fucking vagina jokes. Jesus, mate. That's not as bad as my women driver joke. Wow, right, that's it. Both of you can go on the fucking bad wagon. <laughs> A Mason and his racist jokes. Uh, fuck off, I'm not racist. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm the least okay, racist everybody. person I know. <laughs> What was the one in Temple of Doom? He said something about Temple of Doom and it was proper. Uh, what was it called? Mason said. I think it was because he thought like Kojak was pretty much everyone because they were all black. That, <laughs> no, that guy definitely looks like Kojak. He's also the voice of Magma, the Rock Lord. Do you not think that knight would want to go out and see what the crack was after all this time? I mean, he's not dead yet. <laughs> Not but as soon as he walks out, he'll probably die because he's over 700 years old. Ah, oh, I mean, he should be still, he should but just be... But imagine that that sunshine can I fucking kill his eyes off. Some cream. He's been in bloody dark like for 100 years, man. 700 years he was there, man. Oh, yeah, 702 yeah. years. I like this, I like the way this ends, man. Well, that's it, it's a trilogy end, isn't it? It's... It's done in the same force as the Star Wars, isn't it? It's going right, that's a trilogy. Yeah, off into the sunset. Can't get any more Junior, watch all this Junior stuff. There you go. 
credit grow. Well, they have for you. They're just on the fucking camels or the horses at the minute. He's took a look at his name. I'm in the centre. You named after the dog? Yeah, I think we won't use the laptop next time. Trial and error. Well, at the piano, but it was just a bit of a laziness thing, really, but... Uh, That's been me all day, that. I've had to write these date day. <laughs> I remember when Marcus got lost in his own museum. Do, 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 do. That's it. Out of Canyon. That's the end of the Indiana Jones run, is it, yeah? No, and we've then, got to do the fourth one. And then would have been a run for, what, 16, 17 years? Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah, just a minute, like. Again, if they left it there, it would have been good. I mean, I don't know why, like, years later they would do it. It was more of the nostalgia stuff, but, like, you know what I mean? Sp had Spielberg won the Academy Award yet? He got for Jaws, didn't he? No. No. Was Cowers? I don't know. He wasn't the Academy. I don't think. He, I don't think he even won it for eight. Well, there was a lot of Academy awards, but he didn't win it till like later on, did he? <laughs> He's both checking at the same time. Both checking everything. He's got best director for Frank Ryan, best director for Schindler's List, uh, best picture for Schindler's List, Schindler's List, something. Best Picture of the Post, Best Picture of Bridge of Spies, Best Director LinkedIn. Oh, oh, horse. Horse, uh, letter from Iowa Jimmer. That's it, yeah. I see. He'd been nominated for Lords, but. So he didn't win it until Schindler's win. List, yeah. He also did stuff like Empire of the Sun around this time as well, didn't he? He that, got that nominated was... for Raiders of the Last Ark. The best director, but that was only nominated. That was eighty-seven and Pay of the Sun. So, how many? Juniors. How many? Uh, juniors. How is it? Yeah, how many juniors? Would you give it? Uh, Anyone? See, no, this is—it's a tricky one. This one because I still stand by the first one being the better one. Uh, I think Temple of Doom is not as good as the. Like Should have called. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna go with it. Logically, it's gonna go tie with the first one, which is seven out of ten. Uh, music back to where it should be. I think Temple of Doom was terrible, but it didn't say or strike me as iconic as the first one. And this mm. one, uh, I do prefer. I think when I come down with now that we watch them, I am definitely more like prone to enjoying the adventures. Of Indiana Jones opposed to kind of like more action packed. You know, I think Temple of Doom is a great film for what it is. I just think if you put the three of them together, it does fall short just slightly. Um, so I think for a seven, it, it covers pretty much everything. It's a little bit too much humour. Um, I did mention it. I did think, and I don't think it as much now, but I did think with Sean Connery, it kind of took away a lot of the life of Indiana Jones. I do not agree with myself on that one now. I feel like now that we watched it, uh, it wasn't as bad, but like I say, Sean Connery, as great of an actor as he is, there are some scenes where he didn't really, didn't really sell it to me. Uh, you know, if you're, running, if you're in a, a high tense space kind of scene where you're being shot at, you know, it just seemed silly the way he reacted to some of it. So it's not a perfect film, but I think a seven out of 10 for me. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mason? Um, I'll agree with Carl on the seven, probably. I mean, I, I think, like, we watched them, Temple of Doom's definitely been my favourite one for nostalgia. Then I've got more nostalgia for this as well, because, like, this was, like, I lived in video shops when this was advertised coming out, and, um, again, going back to the whole thing about my dad being massive in the Highlander and Sean Connery this and that. Um, I look back and think it can be shorter, a lot shorter. Um, oh, absolutely. The tank scenes and stuff are 
well executed and it's great to see Spielberg do a trilogy um, in his own pace rather than like again with Jaws how they wanted a fucking shark in the next summer do you know what I mean that big summer blockbuster but like time's been left he's came back and this has been his baby you know what I mean and it's a nice wrap up to the trilogy um, it is it does feel more of a sequel to the first one because of the returning cast and all that but I think it relies a little bit on nostalgia because it almost been like but the either side of it um either side of a decade the, the like people go oh yeah that's a throwback to that throwback to that and like it kind of didn't need throwbacks do you know what i mean yeah so yeah i still stand by going temple of doom is my favorite I'd probably say Raiders and this are probably on par with each other. I think Sean Connery wins this over. I think he's a good addition. I think he's funny. Um, I was a big fan of River Phoenix as a kid as well, so it was great to see that big budget style of it. But it definitely, the fourth one's definitely the worst of the bunch. Like. I'll wait to get to that later on, man. I I'll give it a good old seven. Um, I enjoyed it. It's still probably one of the best really good. It's not as dark as Temple of Doom. There is a lot more comedy, which was all right, but certain places didn't need it. It could have been a little bit shorter, but for end of a trilogy, I think it's a nice send off. To be honest, like nice and short for me. So yeah, so it's seven for me. Hmm. Well, this will be a quadology. We will be back for Kingdom Skull. Um, if you listen to this now at the end, lockdown is apparently ending might end up in lockdown 4 before we fucking know it especially if you encounter people like I did at the shop today um, that's a different story um, Waterworld is definitely on the cards for a video special um, tonight we have suffered a few technical issues but there's nothing we can do we're all in lockdown the world's on fucking hold it has been for a year but for now I've been Stephen Monkey Mason I've been greatly joined by Carl McSorley and Paul Ray thank you very much guys for joining us thank you all right, thanks for listening. Goodbye for now.